All right, good morning, guys. You guys should just finish up your now question. In your own words, explain what learned helplessness is and how it can impact a person's life. So remember from the previous lesson, learned helplessness is basically a state of mind uh, or kind of a stage that people get to after, you know, they've been basically defeated or they've been, you know, they've been unable to solve something or figure something out for a very long period of time where they're constantly met with, okay, failure after failure after failure, uh, you know, issue after issue, wall after wall. And they eventually get to this point of they don't even bother trying to find a solution or they get to this mindset of, okay, there's no way out. There's no way to solve this problem. So I'm not even, not even going to try. And so, like I said before, they've tested this in whether it be lab experiments with animals, or I guarantee you probably uh, know somebody in your life that's kind of gotten to that point in whatever they're pursuing. You know, if they're trying to try out for, you know, basketball team, you know, they get told no, they fail and fail and fail. And after a while, they get to a point where, eh, I'm not going to bother trying out. I'm not going to bother trying. I'm not going to get it anyways. So, uh, some semblance of that, make sure you have about 45 sentences. So we're going to continue our uh, unit today over uh, learning, uh, kind of moving right along here. And so we're going to take kind of a sidestep and we're just going uh, to kind of discuss something that a lot of you are already familiar with and hopefully you guys use in your day-to-day -day lives, uh, looking at problem solving. So uh, obviously there's lots of different uh, methodologies when it comes to this sort of thing. You know, a lot of it's going to be the same. There's a lot of overlap, you know, maybe a different order. Hey, do this first, do this first, do this first. It's going to vary a little bit, but this is just, you know, kind of one perspective. So, looking at problem solving, I've kind of broken it down into four different stages, four different areas, four different steps, if you want to look at it that way. And you can't argue that some of these can be uh, flip-flopped around, just kind of depending on the situation, like, okay, no, you do this one first as opposed to doing this one first. So today, we're just going to kind of go through it uh, kind of literally, and then uh, hopefully it all makes sense at the end. So, when it comes to solving any kind of problem, whether it be math problem, science problem, more of a real life problem, whatever it may be, first starts off with something called finding and framing the problem. You know, first identifying, okay, if there's a problem, you know, what is it? You know, very simple question. If something's going on, something bad, okay, I, if I don't know what it is, then I, can, I can't, you know, be asked to uh, solve it or do anything about it. So asking, you know, simple question, what is the problem? What's going on? You know, how big is the problem? Is it big? Is it small? Is it something I have to do right now? Is it something I can put off for a little while? You know, maybe prioritize a little bit. You know, I got six different things to do. First, I'm going to do this, this, and this. And finally, what resources do I need in order to solve this problem? So before I can even get started on this, okay, do I need some help? Uh, can I solve it by myself? Do I need some people to give me a hand? Do I need some tools? You know, whatever it may be. You know, it's kind of along with this whole uh, learning thing. You know, what tools do you guys need to be successful with this? You know, I'm asking that question for myself, okay? Laptop to record the lessons. Uh, tablet to help me keep track of my notes. Uh, marker. There we go. So, step one, finding and framing. Basically just figuring out what that problem is and what I can do to kind of get started to solve it. Next up, uh, number two, we have developing strategies and plans. So, we have a couple different words here. Maybe you guys are familiar with them. Maybe, you know, maybe some more than others. Starting off with something called sub-goaling. sub, -goaling. sub -goaling, basically meaning, okay, you know, we have one major goal that we're trying to accomplish, one major you know, problem we're trying to solve, but this is kind of like breaking it up into chunks or giving yourself kind of like checkpoints. Okay, instead of trying to look at the problem as one giant thing to solve, okay, what if we break it up into a little, bunch of little problems? Okay, if we solve this one, then we solve this next little problem, then this next little problem, once all those things are added up, hey, we've solved the big problem. And a lot of times it helps us kind of, uh, you know, get in a better mindset. You know, think, oh, great, there's this grand problem, this grand thing we got to solve, this grand thing we got to fix. It's a lot easier to think, hey, no, okay, you know, let's get rid of problem one. Let's go find the supplies that we need. Done. It moves us right along. Then we have something known as algorithms. And you think of like a uh, math problem or math equation. You know, if I give you a random math problem to solve, you know, sometimes, okay, well, I need the formula. I need the, you know, ratio, whatever it may be. And so, you know, it's okay, if I follow that, it's going to help lead me to the correct answer. Or <coughs> maybe if I look at the problem and go, okay, what are all the possible solutions to this problem? So if I think, okay, uh, the problem is, hey, I want to get to Kroger the fastest way possible. Okay, how many different ways are there to get to Kroger? Oh, I can take this street, or I can take this street, I can take this street. And so I could try all possible uh, ways to get there and, you know, solve the problem that way. I could figure it out that way. Then we have something known as heuristics, which is essentially trying to minimize the amount of extra work I got to do. 
the problem solving is already going to take a while. It's already going to take some time and effort. How can we minimize that a little bit? Okay, if I go back to my Kroger example, well, I already know right off the hand that if I go all the way around 465 to get to Kroger that's two minutes away, I kind of already know through just basic logic that that's going to take the longest. So I'm not even going to bother trying that one. And so instantly I eliminate that possibility and now I have let, you know, I can save a little bit of time there. I don't have to waste time doing something I know it's already going to fail. So, number two, strategies and plans. Next up, number three, we have evaluating solutions. Now, this is one of the ones that, you know, some people could argue kind of depending on the situation, oh, this one should come first. By asking the questions, you know, what is success? What uh, does that look like for me? You know, what does it mean when that problem is solved? What does the situation look like? Oh, the problem is solved when I find the quickest way to get to Kroger. That is what success looks like in that situation. And then, you know, especially, okay, how do we know once we arrive at success? I think that's a very, you know, kind of a, a simple question, but, okay, what does it look like? If I'm trying to get to a certain destination, you know, okay, how do I know when I get there? Oh, well, you'll see this, this, and this, and that's how you'll know you'll get there. As opposed to just kind of wandering around, uh, I don't know, have I solved the problem yet? Have I met the goal? Am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? I don't know. Once again. Okay, what does that success look like? Having a very clear cut, okay, once I've done this, this, and this, then I'm done, then I have succeeded. And, you know, in a sentence. And finally, we have over here something called rethink and refine. So, and this can kind of go out throughout the entire, I'm sorry, go on throughout the entire process, but it can also, you know, kind of arrive at the very end as well. So, rethinking and refining. Always asking the questions like, what's next? What's the next step? You know, even after I get through everything. If I solve my problem, okay, well, what do I do after that? Okay, well, go back to my Kroger example. Oh, then I can finally drive to Kroger and then, you know, maybe find an even better way to do it next time. Or then how can this be improved? So after I've solved this problem, okay, got the solution. I'm happy with it. Now, how can I do it even better? You know, you know, think of something like, okay, if I got an A plus on this math test, when you think, okay, I can't really do any better than that because that's the highest score, right? Then you take things into consideration like, well, maybe how I can get some extra credit next time. Or, hey, maybe I could even do it faster next time or more efficiently so I have some time left over. So, once again, those are the questions to be asking yourself. Even if I get to the destination, even if I arrive at the you know, correct answer, I'm happy with it. It's always striving for that next step. It's always striving for that, hey, how can I do it better next time? How can I do it faster? How can I, you know, do even better? So, take a set, uh, step aside for a second if you guys didn't get everything written down. All right, so that's it for this for the day. Quick exit slip to kind of wrap everything up and hopefully to leave you in the uh, correct kind of mindset. So based off of these steps, off these strategies we discussed uh, here today, I want you to fit one problem, whether it be a problem you're having right now, whether it be a problem you've had in the past, and apply that problem to this methodology. So tell me, okay, what do you do or what would you do in step one, step two, step three, and step four? So you're basically fitting a problem that you've already had, or maybe you currently have right now, into this method. And you're going to plug everything in. Okay, tell me what the problem is. Tell me what kind of strategies and plans either you came up with or, or are coming up with, and so, and so on and so forth. You can either write it out as maybe a list, as long as I, you know, it's clear what you're saying in complete sentences, or if you want to put it in paragraph format, that's fine as well. And so I don't really have a, really have a length requirement for it, but just make sure it's very clear. Make sure you're hitting all these steps. All right. If you guys have any questions, feel free to shoot me a comment in the section below or shoot me an email. Until then, see you guys next time.